From Bolarama in Welland, Ontario, it's the 1989 Brunswick Rose Festival 5-Pin Bowling Classic. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Welland. I'm Paul Hendrick, and my colleague for today's broadcast, no stranger to bowling circles, of course, Walter Heaney, the executive director for the Masters Bowlers Association in this province, and another great tournament, the final event of a very busy provincial schedule. Well, a good tournament for us, the last one on our provincial tour. It's going to be special for me. Instead of being in the booth all the time, I'm going to get a chance to uh, be on the lanes uh, for a change, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, you've got some tough competition. Let's look ahead to the top qualifier. Frazier Hambly from Toronto, just a terrific tournament today. Well, a great tournament. Uh, he got by the second day blues. He had a 380 last game to uh, blaze into the lead, averaged over 280, and he won the tournament last month. Uh, he looks like he's in line to win another one today. The toast of the tourney on the women's side, of course, from London, Brenda Heaney, the defending champion in this event, and uh, she's been untouchable so far. Well, she outdistanced the field, uh, 234 pins ahead of uh, Shirley uh, Chicky. Uh, with that kind of an impressive uh, showing, she should have no trouble winning. This afternoon, we'll see three men's matches and, of course, two women's matches. How do you like the competition as it fares up, including yourself? Well, looking at it on the men's side, the uh, Greg Pederitis just coming out of the Nationals where they won the gold medal. Uh, John Willick, who certainly had the line today, he was certainly the top player. Uh, I'll just have to take my chances in the middle, and uh, if I don't make it, I'll root for one of the other fellas. This is a very big year in Master Bowlers, and uh, we have to talk about a quarter century and uh, just great strides, the event and the sport. Well, for the sport, 25 years with the Masters this year, uh, our 25th season, uh, Certainly, we've been able to recognize it with our commemorative book. We've had the pins. Uh, we've talked about it at our various events. And uh, we've still got some charter members around, uh, Fraser being one of them. Well, we've got five matches on tap, as I've mentioned, and we'll be back. And our ladies' quarterfinal match contestant number one from Mississauga, Claudina Lista, averaging 237 points per game. Heading into this match, her opponent today from Font Hill, Shirley Chickey, averaging just around 240 in what is expected to be a very competitive match. The winner assured of $500, the runner-up uh, not too bad, Walter, $350, and again, a competitive match expected, and the winner moving on to the semifinal round as the ladder continues. Well, moving on to the final, Paul, and uh, what's happening, uh, we're going to see a lot of experience with uh, Claudina, and... Uh Certainly, uh, Shirley, who has, has only had one Masters victory, she's certainly bowled for many years, but uh, Claudine has been on a high lately, and we'll certainly talk about that. Been bowling for 38 years, in fact, has won one Masters event and hoping to make it two here, and yes, I must uh, correct myself, this is a semi-final match. Tough break on the left side there for Shirley. Well, in her own backyard here, and uh, she certainly... Uh, from Font Hill and certainly does some bowling here and uh, likes to bring the ball in from the right hand side and uh, it's going to have a lot of experience here. High score in this tournament of 290 and uh, I'm sure if she matches that she'll move on to the final round but uh, Claudina Lista certainly no slouch when it comes to this wow. sport. Well no slouch. Seven Masters wins. Just returned from a uh, Red Deer Alberta where she won the uh, she won second place in the Canadian Open uh, just losing out to Laurie Thompson from uh, British Columbia. Uh, seasoned players has already had two games under her belt here today beating uh, both Sue Wanklin and Connie Dreher and uh, She'll like these two frames here to get rolling oh, One pin far left hand side still standing talking to her about the second place finish out in Red Deer Of course that was on national television televised by CBC and she said the television didn't bother her, Just lost her concentration going into that final match well, lost her concentration didn't really have a good game bold only 200 and uh, Certainly, Laurie's game was only 248, but she uh, survived missing the hit pin a few times in the middle of the game and uh, uh, beat Claudina uh, easily. And this after Claudina led all qualifiers going into that final round. Well, that's right. And not only here, but they're going to get a chance to uh, repeat that rivalry. They're going to play in the Canadian Masters Championships, which uh, begin uh, July the 4th in St. John's, Newfoundland. And Laurie will be representing BC. Claudina will be from Ontario. And it'll certainly uh, give them a chance to go at it again. And it uh, makes for a lot of fun in five pin bowling. Oh, no, sir, not uh, on the right-hand side. Of course, when we talk about the Masters for Claudina, this will be her third trip to the Nationals. They in St. John's, as you mentioned, she has won a silver and a gold and hoping to stay within the top three again this time. Oh, exactly, and should do very well. I think when you look at the overall scoring here this weekend, Paul, the ladies suffered a little bit. The uh, Claudina and um, Shirley both finished in a group, and they found themselves 250 pins behind Brenda Heaney, and I think Brenda Heaney dominated this field, and uh, the ladies just didn't score as well, and... Uh, 
they're just not when the ball just getting not getting enough turn on it and that may be part of it when it's during the release and this may be where uh, if anything Shirley might have a little bit of an edge because she can uh, turn the ball over a little bit she brings it out of her hand you see it turn right there and you see it carries into the pocket nice play to the far right hand side gets them all down but she brings the ball right to left on a, with a hook ball action and uh, gets out of the gate here and that first frame where you bowl that one frame by yourself uh, you get that other way she got a spare there so that helps her a little bit and now uh, now she gets the chance to put a couple of numbers up and uh, Claudina who had to come from behind to beat Connie Dreher may uh, find herself doing the same thing. Shirley's had a personal best of 417 and continues to bowl like that. She'll come somewhere close. However, uh, scores have been somewhat down here, but I guess comments about the lanes have been uh, very favorable and they've down for the, the uh, down for the ladies. Mm -hmm. They've been up for the men. The uh, two bowlers, uh, two 2800s and uh, 2743 to make the step ladder for the men was uh, certainly as good a scores as we've ever had. Well, it's going to be up to uh, Claudina here to uh, get things going. And there's a strike to get back in this game right now. It's still, still early as they jockey back and forth. Oh, and, uh, sure is. Just trying to keep the flow going here and uh, putting some marks up on the board. It's been six years since Claudina last won the Rose Festival Classic. 1983. There's your score. Oh, it's been a popular event. Brenda Heaney, of course, is the defending champion. So we're seeing uh, something a little extra special when, uh, when Brenda gets back to defend her crown. There's a left corner. A good count. And uh, just wants to keep sparing. As you know, you watch her spare this. When she shoots at this left corner pin, she'll be playing the ball across the lane. So this is a young lady who combines both academics with the athletics, and uh, the athletics obvious uh, to us here, but the academics, she is an architect. An architect, and a great uh, role model for the bowlers, and a uh, great example. She's part of the FAME uh, program with the provincial government, the female athletes motivating excellence, and uh, she's been part of that provincial program as one of our five-pin bowling champions, and uh, has done just an excellent job representing our sport. Shirley Chickie here, of course, part of a very famous bowling tandem, Walter, when we uh, look at her husband, Joe. Well, Joe, who's a Hall of Famer, and uh, she dropped this one out a little bit. Oh. And uh, she let it go. And, uh, yeah, Joe's uh, been inducted into the Hall of Fame, certainly one of the top bowlers in the Niagara area, and uh, certainly across Canada. And uh, certainly Joe and uh, Shirley have been a great twosome. Turns that ball over there just oh, right. Oh, nice shot. Uh, brings it around. That's the hook ball action, moving it right to left, and uh, gets that spare. And... Uh, Wants to put another mark on the board here, showing a 20-pin lead right now through three frames. I called for a precision hit on that front pin. Well, you want to be on the side. You, it's, it's similar to the strike shot. You just want to keep the same motion up. And uh, now on the spare, this is where you want to hit the head pin. And she does. And gets the count and uh, gets some local support here, too, uh, being in well into the Rose Festival and... Uh, Certainly a lot of local rooters, and uh, both of them are very popular players. Shirley's in a groove. Claudina hopes to get back into one here. Well, just wants to keep uh, keep the marks going along. Uh, certainly Shirley's on a fine game with 125, and uh, the five-pin game is so high scoring, and that's the problem right there, the splits. And uh, Claudina knows now that she's got a problem uh, bringing herself through the fourth frame with 98, and uh, Shirley's lead is uh, 27 and is going to start to grow. And Claudina's semifinal match win over Connie Dreher of Hamilton. Connie had a similar problem, knocking out the front pin, but nothing else. Yeah, Connie's, uh, she played out west also, and uh, her team finished third out there. And uh, she's been going through a lot of bowling lately, and uh, she's glad to have the season end. Don't to miss it. I guess what uh, Connie, with her, with her uh, biggest effort this year, she, she, uh, Turned to coaching even at her young age and coached the uh, Bantam boys team from Hamilton to a national title. Major uh, sacrifice. Out in Regina, gave up a chance to uh, play on the national team, and uh, certainly it was a major sacrifice and a commitment to the game. And uh, at her young age, she should be congratulated. Here's Claudina now with a major problem. Wants to a mark up on the board. That's, let's get a mark. There That's we go. Want. Get a mark. Get us especially a strike. Uh, it's all you can do at that stage of the game, and uh, turn it back to Shirley. Walter, you mentioned Shirley famous to these, la these lanes and, of course, the area as well. And uh, Dunville. Dunville with her uh, ready mix concrete ready mix business. Com yes. Sure, done very well for herself. Uh, ah. She goes. Another strike, though. And uh, yeah, her and her late husband, Ed, who uh, built that together, Ed Neal. And uh, like I say, now with uh, Joe. And uh, certainly one of the uh, certainly one of the more pleasant uh, five pin bowling stories. 
course, advancing this far over the course of 10 games, you're going to have your highs and lows. And Shirley had a low of 182, but again, a high of 290. So uh, that well, 182 high. was a rare occurrence, and she bowled well enough, of course, to make the ladder and just here on television today. Well, and sitting right now with a 59-pin advantage, uh, Claudina has pretty well got to come with some strikes now. The, uh, the way Shirley has just excelled here with uh, throwing this triple in a row, these we better get some strikes in a hurry. That's, that was almost a must shot, and uh, she needs uh, certainly the minimum of a corner pin spare here just to uh, keep this along. Like I say, trailing by uh, 59 pins. They're both on doubles. And uh, Claudina certainly has her work uh, cut out for her here as she uh, wants to keep the same motion. She's been crossing the ball over the head pin a little bit, putting it in the left-hand side. And uh, I think that's going to do it. The, uh, only the eighth frame, but she's going to find herself into a big hole. And I'm not sure whether television plays a factor, but I think the key for Claudina is to stay off television. Well, part of it, I guess. But when you're so good, it's the point that you're on TV so often. You're in the finals, and, uh, you know, it's it's tough to be the winner all the time. And uh, certainly it's great to just be there. And I know the old story about Jack Nicholas, how he had more second-place finishes than anybody else. And uh, you do that because you're so great. Good play down the left-hand side. Knocks out the remaining pins, but... The mountain is high and perhaps well, insurmountable. It, insurmountable because it's uh, 276 is the best that uh, Claudine is looking for, and uh, Shirley's going to get that. Gives us a chance to look at uh, Connie Dreher. Her score, 2388, won $250. Sue Wankin with her 2349 picked up 200 Brenda Hamilton with 2342 picked up 160 And uh, Sandy Cuthbert, uh, she was the last lady in the money picking up $140. This miss of the head pin, though, she wants brings her 205 through the sixth and uh, still well in control. Looking at 276 to wrap it all up and uh, picks up another 25 in this frame to bring her to 230 and uh, 276 is getting ever closer. You mentioned prize money, Walter and Devitt, and uh, you can have fun on this tour and make a buck as well. Make a buck as well. Certainly uh, Ian Cameron, Rick Wilkins, a couple of the fellas made uh, close to $7,000, I guess, this year. And uh, certainly... Uh, it's it's a it's a certainly a recreation and a sport and uh, it's something the fellows have been able to um, parlay into a some, something a bit lucrative. Dave Pankoff, of course, is the biggest winner this year. Brenda Heaney's fiance winning twenty five thousand uh, dollars, which was the major five pin prize. Well, Brenda, with an opportunity to pad that honeymoon fund uh, with a probable well, victory here this afternoon, with another thousand, she's certainly the heavy favorite and uh, looking at another thousand to take with her. Surely here uh, isn't in any trouble. She's just had a uh, a poor frame last time. She misses the head pin again here, but knowing that 276 is the maximum score, she's uh, perhaps a chance to let up just a little bit. Knowing just you've to got let such up a, a little bit. Um, picks these pins up here. It's going to be up to Claudine. Is going to have to strike, uh, throw four strikes in a row, and uh, hitting these pins here. Claudine now needing four strikes in a row, and that's going to be a most difficult task. And uh, sitting through the ninth frame at 255. Like I say, the best Claudina is going to is 276, and uh, every shot has to be a strike. So it's a, a major undertaking Unlikely. at this stage. Difficult. Yes. There's Lister, the first one. Needs there. three more. Lister was telling me that during her years in YBC, wasn't all that successful. Had to take some time off uh, during school, university, of course, but has come back with a tear since then in 1983, and as we mentioned, has won seven master tournaments. That's right, done very, very well. Uh, went to school in Buffalo, so she didn't uh, didn't play uh, five pins as much, and uh, like I say, looking here for three more, and there we uh, go. she's two away from uh, having a chance. And uh, not gonna go down without a fight. Not without a fight, and uh, that's to say, as each shot becomes a must to have, She'll be looking back at this game, wondering why she put herself in such a hole. Member of Park Royal, Bolorama, in Mississauga, off Truscott yeah. Drive. And there it goes. Uh, Shirley Chickie's going to move on to the final, uh, play against Brenda Heaney, as Claudina finishes up her game here. Just a lot to ask. Uh, the way the conditions were, uh, Claudina averaged uh, just under 240 for the weekend and uh, had bowled 265 and 279 before this, and uh, a lot to ask to... Uh, 
finish off as she bowls 246. And uh, and regardless, just a great tournament. Just a great tournament. Uh, picks up some more money, picks up some more prestige, and uh, certainly a place in the five-pin game. And we can look down the rest of the ladies. Uh, Helen McCallum, uh, 2294, another lady that's going into the Hall of Fame this year. Shirley's coming up with a big finish. Linda Armstrong, who's going to uh, Newfoundland with the Masters team, 22-49. Anna Gazdia, 22-36. Jen Donovan, 22-28. Mark Bratkin, 22-16. Anna Schwartzman, 22-11, along with Susie Bowles from St. Catharines, uh, 22-11. She's hot. She's hot, and she's, she's finishing nicely, and uh, it's a nice victory for uh, Shirley. and. Uh, confidence booster she's going to need more of the same coming up against Brenda the Brenda need more of the same Brenda works the ball real well and uh, you're gonna see the opposite style Brenda works the ball uh, left or right and uh, wow is it going to go down I don't think so don't think so a good working ball though and uh, brings Shirley to uh, 298 298 246 so Shirley advances to play Brenda Heaney from London in the championship match that is coming up. And of course, first prize money of $1,000 at stake. We'll be back with more. Our top qualifier through 10 games and set to defend her championship here in Welland is Brenda Heaney from London. Average score coming into this uh, match, 263, and going for $1,000 in prize money. The runner-up is assured of 500, and her opponent will be Shirley Chickie, who we've already seen dispose of Claudina Lista, and uh, another great match here, and can Shirley keep it going for another game? Well, she's got the ball to try and do it. Uh, Brenda's got to be the true favorite, though. I don't want to dispel anything about it. She won this qualifying round by 234 pins, and uh, now that was almost a full game, the way they were going, and she did it all today. She had the big score, and... Uh, She's certainly uh, up for this. She's the defending champion, and uh, Brenda Heaney should give her a real, should be uh, in the driver's seat here. So the veteran versus youth. Thank you. For sure with the youth, and uh, just the opposite style. So as we talked about Shirley, who brings the ball right to left, and uh, Brenda Heaney, who comes in left to right, and uh, works the ball so hard to get it to the head pin, and uh, uh, obviously works being the winner here last year, the winner, uh, you know, certainly in the final game here this year. It's uh, certainly a uh, big accomplishment. And uh, just one frame, getting this frame out of the way. It's uh, Brenda's choice would be the choice of being the high qualifier. Brenda would get the choice of finishing first or finishing last. And she took the choice of finishing first. So she wants to have her game done with uh, Shirley still having one frame to bowl. And there you see the difference in styles. Lots of play on that ball. Lots Strike. of play on that ball. Moving it left to right and uh, working it to the head pin. And like I say, sh shot 1446, I think, today. And uh, for five games, uh, nearly 290 a game. And... Uh, just out distance the field. Whoa. Well, it gets a split, so it's going to keep it close for a while. Uh, Brenda's going to be part of the Masters, uh, the National Ladies Team, uh, going to Newfoundland as well. And uh, a busy summer coming back, the wedding in August. And uh, Well, she had a great six tournaments. In fact, finished third out of the top six, so going to... St. John's is one of the favorites from this province and nationally. Well, nationally, and the Ontario ladies uh, do so very well out there, uh, coached by Dottie Britton, who seems to be the perennial coach, and uh, she's also from Beamsville down in this area, and uh, the ladies always do well, and uh, they'll, they'll be favorites to bring back gold medals. A little bit of a tangle with the machine. Had a high score in this tournament of 309. Settles for the far pin on the left. Well, I bowled her today, and she just took over with the uh, tournament today and uh, just did very well. And uh, like I say, just dominated the scoring. Shirley's going to be in this game. Uh, like I say, getting that one frame out of the way. Now she gets a chance to play two frames. Uh, get some motion here. Come down from the excitement. It would be pretty exciting beating Claudina. There's no question about that. Um, Inside, she's got to have it, uh, the adrenaline flowing a bit, beating the, uh, you know, the current uh, Ontario Masters champion, the silver medals, and the nationals, and so on, and uh, be a great accomplishment. She's got to get that out of her system a little bit now. Settle down, cover this corner, which she's going to do. Yes. And uh, throw another mark here, and uh, in one game, it's, uh, it's always anything can happen, and uh, certainly that's what's going on here. Shirley's been bowling for the better part of 38 years, and... Uh discussed age she said she's somewhere over 50 but oh, we'll sure. refer to her as a spring chicky a distinguished career and uh just wants to get this on the side again but no she's a little tighter this game and 
unfortunate. You got to you got to play to the head pin in this game. There isn't any other way of scoring, and uh, the, that's one of five pin bowling's uh, unique tricks. Is that it can be picked out, and then you've got a wide open split. Oh, bad luck here for Shirley. Well, she pins them off, and uh, not a whole lot she can do with this now. Uh, it's not going to be as high scoring as the last game, possibly at 298, uh, 246. So it's. Uh, the money's still there. It's not a question of how much you, how much you score. It's uh, winning the game. And uh, gets that out of the way. That's an unfortunate shot. Going through the third uh, with uh, 48. Now Brenda is up and uh, her two frames and a chance to work a couple of marks. That's really what the uh, order of the day is right now. 28 years of age and a physiotherapist at University Hospital in London. Well, it's done very well. She's on our board of directors and uh, certainly brings a good presence to the board. And, uh, very interested in the game. She's uh, done a lot, works a lot with the YBC, with the youth bowling, and uh, she's certainly an asset. Uh, as fine, well as fine group of people on and off the lanes. Well, it's working out real well with, uh, you know, Claudina being the architect and uh, Brenda being a physiotherapist. It's uh, certainly been exceptional for us. And uh, uses a lot of lane with that ball, doesn't she? She sends it across there and uh, gets a spare. And uh, this sport certainly has picked up image-wise when we look back to the 50s, hasn't it, Walter? Well, when you look back to the uh, the automatic machine coming along in the uh, mid to late 50s, the um, a lot of things, as we talked about, are 25 and 30 years old this year with the YBC, the Five Pin Association, and so on. And uh, these things all brought the uh, bowling centers from the uh, billiard hall reputation kind of thing. They brought the families into the center. They made them recreation centers as opposed to uh, what they are today. And, uh, and of course, master bowling strength I would have to think is the YBC and that, that grows well it's it grows and it's been feeding the uh, it's been feeding the uh, tournament ranks and uh, we've got a hold up here as the uh, the pin setter knocked out the uh, three pin that Brenda left and uh, we've got to get this back here they're gonna have to do a, uh, a manual uh, clearing down at the back Gets the spare. 64 through three and a spare in the fourth. Uh, a modest 16 pin lead here, but uh, Shirley wants to get a couple of marks here so this game doesn't fade away on her. And uh, you know, she's, she's competitive right now, but she's been. Uh, having a little trouble getting the ball at this time. It's not quite the same Shirley as we saw against Claudine. I think it's part of the letdown. It's part of the mental part of the game. She might think she's throwing the same ball and so on, but she's a little uh, mentally down from the uh, last game. Like I say, certainly a big victory to beat Claudina, and uh, that was a tough shot. Nobody was sparing that three pin this weekend. It, uh, tough shot to carry. It can be done, but it's uh, can be a little more difficult. And the confidence factor, very important. And uh, as you can see with Brenda, she uh, seems to be playing with a head of steam behind her and uh, very much confident. Very confident. Had a big score today. Knows it. Shot 1466 today. Uh, like I say, outdistanced the field. And uh, Shirley here is uh, with only 63 in the fourth. Is only down the one count. And uh, she wants to pull herself back together again, get the motion going, and uh, pull this back together. One shot will do it. Well, here's a corner, and she's been uh, she's been covering this corner, especially with the ball going right to left. It uh, should be able to move across the lane, and uh, this can get her back on the track a little bit. Shirley bowls twice a week and uh, masters, so. Well, that, and that's fairly normal for a lot of people, and uh, she covers this corner, which is what Good. she wants to do, and that's uh, that's fairly normal for a lot of bowlers these days. A uh, couple of major leagues, uh, maybe a fun league in a major league, and. Uh, and they play the Masters, and they run us these tournaments. Uh, we run uh, all together 11 tournaments during the year, so it's pretty well one a month, and it uh, keeps everybody pretty busy. Brenda, after a 14.66 earlier today, I, that comes from an 11.66, so she really picked it up. Oh, turned it on completely, and uh, just did exceptionally well. And uh, like I said, outdistanced the field, 234 pins. And I was playing with her, and just she just threw a tremendous amount of strikes, and uh, the ball was working real well. And uh, this one's going to drift away, oh, and. Shirley's getting some extra life here as uh, Brenda hasn't been able to uh, run this game away the way she'd want to. And uh, make sure she gets it on the last one. Well, gets it on the last one, brings her to the fifth at 107. But uh, Shirley was 63 in the fourth on a spare and uh, is still in the game. Down uh, just the 15 pins uh, or so. She was uh, down before that frame. So, so Brenda realizing the uh, wants to get, get a mark. Yes. 
Knew it. Is a, well, loves to play in that pocket, and now uh, is going to keep her lead and leaves it up to Shirley, who's been having her uh, problems here with her uh, with the momentum and uh, just keeping uh, just keeping the speed up and so on. She's been dropping the ball a little bit at the line where she really wants to get it out on the lane, turn it over uh, right to left, and uh, move it into the pocket. And that's what she does, and uh, this becomes a pretty big shot for uh, Shirley to. Uh, Get her right back in the game as she gets. They both have strikes going through the six. Surly's only down 14 pins. Uh, and there it is, 107 to 93, and uh, both working on strikes. And uh, Shirley wants a mark here. Brenda has opened up the door ever so slightly and, and does the job. Strikes Shirley's in bunches. Try to kick it in anyway. Strikes in bunches are what wins tournaments. And uh, what she's done is she's able to put the mental change over to Brenda to say, here, there's a couple of marks up on the board. and. Uh, I just see Shirley taking a big sigh really to get those out of the way because she can switch the pressure over to Brenda. That's what you're always trying to do is put the pressure on your other opponent. And there's what happens. Uh, if you pull the shot and uh, with five pin it's such a high scoring game. The momentum changes. Now Shirley takes the lead. And, uh, you want to make sure you hit both these pins here on this side because it's a big count and she gets them both. Brings her 132 through the sixth. And pinning up here in the seventh frame, she's got to go over and start over. So, uh, like I say, it's not going to be a high-scoring game. So let's. Uh, there, there it is. Got one forty-seven. We don't pay off by the pin, so uh, winning is what matters. So let's uh, see if the girls can uh, say. Brenda just wants to get a mark here. Oh, she and fiance Dave Pankoff, as you've mentioned, I'd have to think uh, bowling's top couple. Well, they've done real well with the, him winning his big money this year. They're uh, honeymooning in Greece. Uh, she told me a bit of the itinerary involving cruises and so on, and it looks like a pretty exciting time. And uh, not so exciting here. Now, another head pin brings this one back to earth. And uh, boy, she wants to pin both these off. She wants to forget these two frames. Oh. Still in this, not at this by a long shot. Yeah, Shirley's still got some work to do, and uh, Brenda wants to get uh, these. The next two and the three here to give her a 13 count for the frame, get her up to 160. Surely, of course, the partisan favorite here coming from the area, and uh, it's going to be tight. It's going to be uh, certainly from the Rose Festival and getting a lot of action here. It's uh, she got a lot of rooters because this is these next two shots are going to be uh, pretty paramount for Shirley to grab this game. 93 working on a double, and uh, she can put some real damage on the board here. She can uh, be well on her way to win number two. Well, these lanes, no. She wants to. Uh, oh, not enough. Gets a count, though. It's a good count. 43 count on that first strike, bringing that up to 136. And uh, she's going by. Uh, she's going to go by Brenda now and uh, wants to spare this. This is probably her tougher pin to spare, being on this right hand side, because she's got to play the ball down along the channel, as they call it these days. And, uh, there it is. She kept it out on the lane a little bit and got it. And uh, big spare there. Going through the uh, seventh frame at 166. Uh, lead over 30 pins and only two frames to play. It's uh, when you look at the score now, it's Brenda's going to 250. That's her maximum score, 250. So surely, you know, as she did with Claudina, is uh, wants to get it close. And there it is. That's a long way towards 250. 196 strike and uh, exactly what she did with Claudina. Brenda is going up, uh, having to throw four strikes in a row. And the momentum has changed. Just one shot does it. Those two head pins, really, back to back. Uh, the seventh and eighth frame. And uh, here's Brenda now looking at four strikes as a must. Now there's a clutch strike. But the next, uh, the next two are the, the next two as well. And uh, this is where it. Uh, see, the, with the top score down 36 pins, both on strikes. And uh, like I say, Brenda's maximum gain 250. Crossing it over. And doesn't get it. It's uh, it's all over. Uh, Shirley's a thousand dollars richer. As Brenda's going to have to settle for second place. Spares the corner. 190, 220, the maximum uh, game. And uh, as I say, Brenda, one of the few bowlers who have uh, tried to repeat at a tournament, and uh, is not going to be able to oh, do it. It's a tough road to the hall and. Uh, Shirley, who bowls here regularly, she's a league player here. Is that any advantage? I think it's some advantage. I think it's some advantage being your local area. I think it's great for the uh, uh, some of the more senior players on the tour to come out and win these crowns. I think that's what uh, shows bowling as being the lifetime sport. And uh, 
something you can play. Lloyd Ormerod was here this weekend at 74, still bowling and uh, going on 54. <laughs> still bowling and uh, talking about next year already and uh, ready to play and. Uh, it's just something we can do all the time. And, uh, on behalf of all the Master Bowlers, I hope we can do it forever. Well, if you ever get an opportunity to visit Lloyd and his wife at their Hamilton home, it's a bowling shrine. Well, he's got all his memorabilia, and he's got the scores and the data, and he can tell me all the games. Shirley's checking the score there. I think she's, I think she's pretty happy in you know, realizing what she's done, and she's uh, got this in the bag and can just play this last shot and uh, celebrate a win here at the Brunswick Rose Festival. Well, there's our champion. There's Joe. Kiss for the winner. Shirley Chicky, the champion here at the Welland Rose Festival Bowling Festival. Final score of 236 to 220. We'll be back with more bowling after you watch this. Our men's quarterfinal matchup featuring Greg Pederitis from Toronto. He is a bank auditor, averaged 274 points per game coming into this one. He'll meet Stony Creek's John Willick, 276. So this plans to be a very tight match, and both have been close in qualifying. The winner assured of $750, the runner up $500. Willick versus Pederitis, and Greg set to start it off. Well, he's going to pull the one frame as uh, was John's choice, and John has chosen to finish first as well. Yeah, so Greg bowls the one frame, then John will bowl two. John had a big day today. Greg had a better day yesterday. So we'll see if this has a bearing on it. And um, today, John was 1478. Greg was only 1313. And uh, in the middle, John threw 1,000 for three games. And that's what uh, that's what projected him right from the uh, middle of the field up to the top here. Greg, however, on a bit of a roll, had to win two games to make it this far earlier well, won, this afternoon. Won two games, beat Rick Moran, who comes down from Ottawa, beat him uh, 278 to 253, and then uh, uh, got by Mickey Piker uh, a little bit easier, 313 to 196. And uh, But they've had an hour's wait since then, and uh, now they're coming over here, and uh, John said he was really looking forward to this game. He's played Greg once before and uh, lost to him, but uh, uh, he's keen to play and uh, got it sorted out today, and... Uh, John, a very familiar face at Lucky Strike Lanes in Stony Creek. He is an expediter at DeFasco, 39 years of age, and figures he's been bowling for about 31 of those years. Well, he's done a lot for bowling, and he's done a lot for us. He's quite involved in all the sports. And, uh, look, there's that three-pin shot that was people are having so much trouble with, and uh, John gets that one out of the way early and uh, pulls that one off. The men had a little better, uh, little better time with the scoring here this week. And, uh, uh, you know, 27.67 for John and uh, Mickey Piker, 27.61, and uh, two scores over 2,800. And uh, the men bowled very well. John, by the way, will be going to St. John's Newfoundland as well, but in a coaching capacity. In a coaching capacity, picked by the uh, picked by the men's tournament team. And, That's an honor. Uh, that's for sure, and uh, he's done his work. He's done a lot of work with baseball and uh, certainly relates well with the bowlers. And uh, um, the men always do well. It's a lot tougher with the men than the national masters. And... Uh, It'll be interesting to see. They're bringing up pretty well a new team there. Greg, uh, Greg Pederitis is on it, but the rest of them uh, uh, are pretty new. And as they say here, he's uh, going to be he's bowling against a fellow he's going to be coaching. Pederitis has won four Masters events, so this makes this tournament ever so special. The fifth uh, means uh, a diamond in the center of that coveted ring. Yeah, a large diamond and uh, something the bowlers certainly look for. They seem to uh, not think about the money when they're up there. Everybody wants to wear the Master Bowler's ring as a symbol of tournament victory, and uh, uh, it can always uh, be a big barrier to get that fifth victory. Regardless of where Greg finishes in this event, uh, He's stepped up one from last year where he plays six, just missed out on qualifying for the television matches. Well, he's done very well. He's speeded his ball up a little bit this year. You see he's holding it pretty high. Um, brings it up. Throwing it a little bit harder this year, but uh, boy, the fellas are fencing back and forth here and not going very far. Head pin chop off and a head pin as, uh, as they stumble out of the gate here, literally. Greg will be going to his fifth Master Nationals in St. John's. He was the second best aggregate scorer in the province. Certainly one of the men favorites. Oh, one of the top bowlers all the time. I know he was in Newfoundland with us in 82 the last time we were there. We're in Cornerbrook and uh, certainly part of the team down there. And uh, Picks up 13, goes through the third at 43. Is a uh, little slow match, similar to what the lady said last time with uh, Brenda and uh, Shirley. And uh, John here wants to get something started. 
And the strikes will be there because he threw too many strikes today to not have them here in this game. And uh, John being nice and tall, the nice reach, and uh, able to lay the ball out on the lanes. Had a high game in this tournament of 353, as we mentioned at the top of the match, 276 average coming into uh, the game. Has had two perfect games over his career and a 448 well, at Sherwood Lanes in Hamilton. I saw the 448 game. The pin was down and stood back up again. Uh, we were bowling right there, and it was an amazing shot, one of the most special shots I've seen in five-pin bowling. It's away with a spare there. 65 through the third. Working on a spare in the fourth, and uh, despite the poor score, already sitting with a 22-pin lead, and... Uh, Craig has already had a 278 and a 313 game. Is, uh, lots of him. action there. Lots of action and uh, lots of strikes still to come. Playing the ball a little left to right and uh, moving it up to ahead. You see John sitting here with a 22 pin lead, but Greg get a chance here. He puts another strike up on the board. The game will be virtually uh, dead even. And he you gets it, it too, and that's that speed that he wanted to put on the ball. That's one thing Greg hadn't been doing over the years. He's been uh, getting into this condition with plastic pins and strings, and he'd been uh, sacrificing maybe 20 pins a game, and so he spent some time, sped his ball up, and uh, has done real well. Well, so far, our best match of the afternoon. That's right, and John's, boy, he's not uh, playing this ball to the head pin a lot. He uh, gets a poor count there, which is something he didn't want, and uh, Greg's certainly right back in this game. No trouble at all. John's won two Masters events, the latest last year at the double knockout in Oshawa. Very good, solid bowler. He's been, uh, I'd say, just solid in all the events. And I think the coaching that he's going to do in Newfoundland is going to be a big plus. He's a real technician of the game. And uh, so you see here, John now wants to put another mark in the He wants to hit this head pin. He doesn't want to be missing it here. That's the, uh, that's the problem shot. Ooh, that three pin dies in front of the corner and uh, wants to pick up this spare, though. And... Uh, 113 through the fifth and uh, get a spare here. He'll be uh, he'll be okay barring uh, you know Greg going on four or five in a row and uh, picks this up. Greg comes up gives us a chance to uh, one of the things he's done as a hobby is visited bowling centers across Canada. He was going over that I know we're in Red Deer. He took time out uh, during some of the off hours to visit another one of the bowling centers and uh, mentioned to me he's bowled in 213 centers across the country. And that's phenomenal. Exactly. And uh, he's just done really well visiting and logs them all. I think he marks them all down and knows where he's been and uh, loves the sport. Just loves it. He's one of the fellows who's done a lot of practicing. He's uh, been able to put some extra time into the game and uh, Picks up that spare, which uh, after missing the head pin brings him to 108, and they're five pins apart uh, after five frames. Uh, John Willock leading 113 to 108 as the game is that close and uh, waiting for one of them to break loose. There's the score through five. John leading 113 to 108, both working on spares. Making sure they're on the side here. Those are the shots that hurt because you lose on the count and uh, this spare becomes most difficult. Well, despite that last shot, Greg uh, told me prior to the match that uh, the lanes here have been playing great. Well, they've been playing great. I bowled to him as well. Brenda and I, were all, we were all in the same lanes and uh, like I said, they played well for all of us. And uh, now Greg finds himself in a little bit of a hole. Here he uh, wants to pin this 15 and uh, John then moves into the driver's seat and has a chance to uh, control his own destiny here in these next two frames. Interesting match for you to commentate on. You'll be playing the winner and uh, wow, for a conflict of interest, but who would you like to play? I don't think that really matters at this stage. I'm not, uh, I'm not really too concerned. The, uh, it's certainly going to be a pleasure for me to uh, be on the lanes, and uh, I've certainly done enough commentating from the booth, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing either one of them, and uh, as I say, I don't think at this stage it's really going to matter. Now, when you get this far. Oh, there. plenty of play and it paid off. Well, that's right. And John's, uh, like I say, he's able to control his own uh, his own uh, destiny here, and he's just moving ahead now as he gets one frame up and uh, 143 through the sixth and on the strike. And uh, what John wants to do here is be able to put another uh, put a mark on the board here and uh, take a 30-pin lead. Avoid the middle. Yeah, he knew it too. Real competitor, John. And Gave uh, it a bit of English, verbal right. and uh, physical. Exactly. And now with uh, John wanted to finish first, he's going to be able to do that as Greg's going to go up here and bowl the eighth and ninth frame. He's 143. Uh, his maximum's 278. 
That's still a long way. Greg, of course, part of the gold medal winning team at the Old V Championships in Red Deer. Exactly, and uh, certainly an exciting team. Uh, really bowled well during the championship. They they led uh, most of the way, but then as in, as we're doing here now, they had a step ladder final, and uh, the team was able to come through and uh, win there as well. So there's a lot of exciting things going on in five pin bowling in the last uh, the last couple of months, and uh, certainly that championship was one of them. But uh, Greg is in a lot of trouble here as he picks these two pins off. Taking himself 155 through the eight. His maximum now is 245. This shot must be a strike. There is no question about it. A spare will not be good enough here at all. This ball's got to be a strike. And it's not a strike, and uh, that just means problems. Even to pick up the spare here, 185, uh, would only bring him to 230, and John's, uh, John's not going to miss getting 230. Right to left gets it. Gets the spare, but uh, like I say, certainly in a lot of difficulty. 155 through the eight. John goes up now with uh, 143 and a double. Two frames still to play, and uh, he's just going to salt the tournament away. This is a chance to look at some of the others. Mickey Piker won $400. Rick Moran won three. Uh, some other scores. Kevin Berg, uh, 26.73. He won 250. Ralph Eckert, uh, one of the local bowlers, 26.63, and another $250. Ralph Malcolm, another local player, uh, won 200. Uh, Ernie Tataran uh, also picking up $200 with 26.48. And uh, John picks up this spare, moves to 208 on a spare, and uh, one frame to go. Uh, it's all over. Like I say, there's uh, Willick's my man. It'll be Willick and Heaney coming up next. If you look at some of the other scores, Nick Pagniello having a good tournament, 26.40. Dale Strutt, another fellow going to Newfoundland, 26.14. Ian Cameron is going to take over for me here, hopefully for two games with uh, 25.99. Brian Kay, 25.93. Mike Wilson, 25.81. Ron Gilbert from the local area, 25.78. The Canadian Open champion Mike Wood at 25.32. And from Guelph, uh, Norton Sims, the last bowler to cash with 25.28. Tremendous relationship, uh, you people as well, with the folks at Brunswick. Uh it's worked very well with Brunswick. Harley Perkins, who's now the uh, manager for Canada, and uh, Brunswick have been very supportive. They're having a great year, as he told me. Uh, five pins is uh, is booming. There's lots going on, lots of new building going on, and Brunswick's part of that. And uh, it's a busy time with conventions. The Bowling Proprietors of Canada Convention, uh, the uh, Bowlers Convention, the Proprietors of Ontario will be conventioning uh, next week in Niagara Falls. Uh, there's June's big convention month, and uh, the business, the, the the industry settles down and uh, reviews some of its yearly activities. Pederitis like Lista, not a star in the YBC competition, but uh, certainly have blossomed quite well here. Well, done very well in the adult, uh, the adult gang. That's a tough game here. Gets this one out of the way, 193. And uh, with a tough start, uh, threw that big double in the fourth and fifth, but uh, that was it. So the final score, 258 to 193. John Willick advances against our very own Walter Heaney. Pickering, Walter Heaney averaging uh, 280 points per game to make it into the semifinal round. He'll take on John Willick, our previous winner. And the winner of this match is shirt of $750, the runner-up 500. Ian Cameron, that's pretty good dollars for a weekend's work. It's good money for uh, the amount of hours you work, it sure is. And of course, one step further from this, chance at $2,000 in prize money in the men's championship. Yeah, John gets the ball first here. Uh, Walter, uh, being sitting here in the booth, uh, getting down there, hopefully he's all loose, gets the ball two frames after John bowls this first one. For you folks at home, my colleague now for this match, Ian Cameron, former Canadian Open champion, who will be taking part in St. John's Newfoundland in July in the Masters and uh, heading the Ontario team out there. That's right, Paul. We'll be going to Newfoundland. Uh, not only the ball, but to have a good time. Well, it's easy to mix both in this sport. 45 years of age is Walter Heaney, a full-time executive director for the Masters Bowlers Association. So you can say that bowling is his life. Yeah, he's on the organizational end of it. Does a great job there. And here he is bowling. It's nice to see. And uh, starts out with a strike. He's got the ball rolling very well right now. Matches it up well, so yeah. certainly no worse for wear for three games here in the broadcast booth. Comes out with a tear here in his first match uh, in the afternoon. I'm sure Walter would uh, like me to stay here for two games, and he's on his way to doing that right now. John like to throw a strike here, get back in the match. 
Oh, yeah. It does so. Good three pin action on the uh, strikes. Three pins are just kicking into the corners for both players. They got a good roll on the ball. They're bowling uh, backup balls. And as Walter said before, moving right to left on the lanes. Willick, previous match defeated Greg Pandoritis, as we have seen, is in a groove from that match. Hasn't let up here against Walter, but. We got a barn burner going here, I think. Previous frame, Walter uh, seemed to be right on track as well. Plenty of X's on board. Good match so far. Yeah, good speed. There we go. Yeah. Good speed on the ball. They're both not overthrowing, uh, getting good roll, and again, getting that good action. Walter won a open event tournament in Hamilton this past Easter. And Walter getting good lift in that ball at the foul line. Good, good action. And that was his first win since 1981, where he picked up $1,500. So Walter's bowling really going through a resurgence of sorts here in 1989. Yes, he has. He played well in the 10% in London uh, a few weeks ago. And again here this weekend. So uh, maybe he's getting back into the groove. Here's John. Wants to have a strike just to keep in this match. Oh, he missed it. Just laid up in the ball a little bit, and it broke off. Walter having a 25-10 lead after two frames. So far, bowling the perfect game. Yes. Top Which break for John. Perfect game. Uh, Air Canada has an award for that. I'm sure Walter would uh, love to do that right here on TV. Picks up his 15. Got to come back with a strike here. Uh, doesn't want to get too far down in this match, just in case Walter uh, doesn't keep on going. There he is, right back. Been a great match. Two great competitors here, Heaney and Willick. And Walter telling me as well that he's lost a bit of weight, and that has improved his play. I think it has, too. Uh, you know, the extra weight, uh, uh, it, it prevents your swing from doing what you want, follow through in that. And right now you can see him. He's got good arm action, good follow through. Just on, just pulled that one a little bit. Well, just the pulled first, it at the first blemish overall so far in this game. Mm -hmm. Needs to pick up this spare to keep his uh, his lead. Has won six Masters events over a terrific career, hoping to make it seven this afternoon. Yeah, going for lucky number seven. 155 to 105. Walter on a spare or John on the strike. Walter wants to keep things rolling right here. Well, Shirley Chickie's play this afternoon is an omen of things to come for Walter. Things look great. Shirley, of course, the second place qualifier went on to upset Brenda Heaney for the championship. And Walter in much the same position. Qualified second. Winner, of course, will take on Fraser Hambly in our final round match of the day. Yeah, bowlers are superstitious, just like any other sports uh, personalities. And uh, I'm sure Walter looked at that and said, uh, I'm in second, too. I can win this. So, but First things first, Mr. Willock on the menu here. Here's a chance yes. and takes out both pins. All right, Walter's 190 through eight frames. Six frames, sorry. Strike here will put John right back in the match. And he's throwing the backup ball. Good swing, good delivery on that one. Ah, oh, yes. Caught the front pin at the far side, got the play he wanted, and of course the strike. It's almost uh, when you see that ball leave his hand to the foul line, you can almost tell what it's going to be. Big shot here for him. Love to have a strike here. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, yes. And a little commentary from John as the ball was delivered. Did so in the previous match and it paid off. Well, I think he knew that was a big shot and he wanted that one bad and uh, he showed it to us by just his reaction there. There's Walter's shot. Left corner, corner pin. pin, the three pin just kind of toppled on him there. Didn't get enough roll off of it. Earlier today, uh, Walter had a 383 game, and that was a high game for his tournament. He had 1436 for his five game total today. Again, 2803. So he averaged 280 this weekend. Just a little off in that. I would like that one back again. Yeah, that's Averaging 258 in the league play. Yeah, that left corner pin's a little tougher for the backup ball because you got to play it along the gutter there. You can see that's where the ball channeled into. Well, Walter wants to come back to a strike here. 
as uh, Joan is now starting to take up her hand on him. I'm sure those previous two shots might be eating away at him, but he's got to put it behind and proceed yeah. and go for the strike. Yeah, this, uh, if you can look at this turning point, he's had two open frames to John's two strikes. Willa coming on three consecutive strikes, and Walter matches that. Yeah, Walter's got to fight back here, put some pressure on John. Hopefully, uh, you know, uh, uh, for Walter, hopefully uh, John want, will have a bit of a mishap, but uh, of course we aren't hoping for that here. Coming off a strike, big big ball here now for Willa. Comes he through again. Yep. Well, talk he's about putting the pressure on one's opponent. Yeah, he's certainly got uh, Walter under the gun now. Uh, this ninth frame could be the teller right here. John looking at going for 375 at this moment. Walter opened up with four consecutive strikes. Willick there he is, yes. Struggled just a bit, but has come on here in the latter stages of the match and is in control. It looks like Walter will be uh, back with you up here, Paul. <laughs> Of uh, course, if he can strike out here, he can certainly make uh, John uh, have to mark at least. So we want to strike here from Walter. Has to be. Yes, he did it. He's coming through. Another clutch shot. Clutch shot. Yes, it is. Walter, of course, no relation to Brenda. The he no is spelled differently. Differently, yeah. Double E as opposed to an EA. Mm -hmm. But they do have something in common. They're both very good bowlers. Both very good bowlers, yeah. So here you can see the situation. 203 on a double, 240 on a double. Walter will finish his Come game on. first. Left corner pin left up. Mm -hmm. So that gives him 43. It's 248 in the eighth frame. John pretty well has this game under control now. Walter can still shoot 300 plus. Oh, the cursed left pin. <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to say that left corner pin's doing me in. Finally. Uh, 289. Nice game for Walter. Above Excellent his average. Game. Above his average. Can't be ashamed of that at all. John Willick's just been throwing the ball a little bit better. Better roll. He'll finish this off. He'll probably be a little more relaxed now. Oh, he's still throwing. Sometimes in these situations when you got the game in hand, you uh, tend to ease off. But uh, John wants to keep it going, I think, for his uh, next opponent, Fraser Hambly. Uh, Willick with a 276 average coming into this game is going to be way above that. Mm -hmm. Just bowled an excellent game. He's got the ball rolling so well. Right in the left-hand pocket there, just cleared everything out. He's got a string of strikes going for him. Yeah. 330 plus, uh, if he can get 45 in this frame with a strike. This will make it eight consecutive 375. strikes. 375. Incredible. Super bowling. And Walter, too. 375, 289. Well, Heaney can't complain about that. Willick was just superb. Ends it off with eight consecutive strikes and will advance to the championship round against Fraser Hambly. We'll be back with our men's championship match. The top qualifier from Toronto, Fraser Hambly, an average of 282.4. He, of course, will take on John Willick with $2,000 in prize money up for grabs. The runner-up, not bad, $1,000 Hambly versus Willick, and we're set to go. And, of course, John with the honors first. Well, as what's happening in the last game here, uh, Fraser is uh, choosing to uh, finish first, and uh, he's going to let John throw this first frame. And I was kind of happy when he didn't get a strike in this first frame that uh, he was maybe going to be off to a slow start. Going back to last game, that is nine consecutive strikes, and uh, he is on a streak. Well, that's nine in a row, and like I say, just missing a couple of left corner pins certainly left the door open, and... Uh, he just blew right on by it. Uh, strikes and bunches are what wins, and uh, certainly you throw eight in a row to finish a game. Uh, 375, it's not going to lose anything. Been a great tournament for Hambly. He, of course, the top qualifier, as I mentioned, but uh, he's been playing with a rather sore left leg, which he injured in a freak accident. Previous tournament, I guess a piece of glass on the floor, and he jammed his leg on it. Yes, back earlier in the year, and uh, he's had a few months trying to get over it, and. Uh, I guess he started out the tournament with 388. He was out of the gate. He was the leader the first day with 1511. He doesn't, uh, as he says, he's not a morning person. Didn't bowl well to start today out. And uh, boy, gets a three pin spare there to help that game. Al well, says he likes the lane conditions, especially the new rubber bands on the pins. Gives his ball more action. Well, he's a technician of the game, naturally. He's been a Canadian champion a couple of times, just selected for induction to the five pin Hall of Fame. He's uh, certainly one of the top five bowlers ever to play the game. And uh, five time master event winner. A two-time Canadian, and that's uh, 
It's really a, 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 all major accomplishments. So started today with a 191 game, and uh, looks like the wheels were off, and uh, but finished with 383 to take the lead back in the tournament and uh, be the number one spot. And that's the spot you want to be in. You want to be uh, just have to play one game to win it all. And uh, tremendous winning spirit in this gentleman, and uh, uh, he knows how to win, wants to win, and. Uh, uh, he'll give John all he can handle here, especially with John coming uh, off this 375 game. But with John, it's now it's nine in a row, and the streak uh, the streak continues. And uh, at 375 was 100 points better than his average for the tournament, so reaching new heights here. Make it 10 in a 10 row. 10 in a row. Does this man like to play on television? <laughs> Just a great competitor, he loves the game, knows so much about it. And we talked about it being the coach. He's been a national uh, competitor. And uh, he's got the stroke. I think he said he wanted to play today. He was looking forward to it. He wasn't kidding. Well, 11 on 11. 11 in a row. And that puts Fraser under the gun early. Fraser, 46 years of age, been bowling for about 34. Yeah, started in the days just at the end of the CJBC and into the YBC and uh, was a major league star at 16, 17 years old. Last event won the Dick Adams Memorial in Oshawa. Tough yeah. luck there. Almost surprised that he won that event. Uh, he had bowled uh, rather poorly in our last event in London and uh, took his injuries with him down to Oshawa and uh, beat the field, uh, shooting about 27.35, and I think he won $600 down there. Well, unlike several of the competitors we have seen this afternoon, Fraser will not be going to St. John's. He, in fact, had a tough last day. It was tough day down there. It uh, just pulled hamstring, acted up, and uh, you, don't, you don't see too many bowling injuries, but this was one of them. And uh, Well, he played second heading into the final round and uh, unfortunately just couldn't uh, make it into the top six. Just couldn't get it going. And right now, with 60 in the third, he's in a lot of difficulty here, right out of the gate. Uh, because with John sitting on 11 in a row, eight from the last game and three here, it's a question of, uh, boy, how far away, how far ahead is he going to get? Good look at the ball Frazier is using, and uh, it is a plastic ball. Likes, likes the plastic. Yeah, but you know, sometimes with the plastic ball, you get a more uniform uh, cons uh, weight and consistency, the weight variation, as opposed to a rubber ball, which can have uh, some movement of the, uh, the center of gravity even in the ball. With the plastic ball, you don't seem to have that. And... Uh, uh, I played with the other ones all weekend, and uh, it's, you know, strictly bowler's choice. It's sometimes a question of what you can hang on to, what feels more comfortable in your hand, and uh, I was playing with the uh, the Brunswick ball, actually, and uh, it was a question of looking. Uh, the ball wasn't hopping the corners when it hit, and you wanted it to carry through, and it did that most of the time. I see John playing with the plastic ball as well. Maybe I was doing the wrong thing. But there's 12, and... Uh, as we say, he's had a couple of perfect games of four. Not that this one's a perfect one, but uh, had he done that on the Masters Tour, that's a trip for two anywhere in Air Canada. And uh, Ian mentioned that. Certainly something we've been uh, something we've been doing well with Air Canada. It's one of many sponsors that are on the tour, and uh, the Nationals are sponsored by Walkers and uh, Hiram Walker. And here we are with Brunswick, and uh, the game is blessed with a lot of great sponsors. Going for strike number 13, 13. in a row. Ah, oh, far right-hand corner pin. That scoreboard looks like a voting booth with all those axes. Well, exactly. 133 uh, through the third already. Uh, looking to spare this up. And uh, oh, Mr. Willett giving a new meaning to the term new man. Oh. Well, no, you've seen that shot before. I've <laughs> seen that shot before. Uh, those left side that were there, I wish they'd been right corner pins, and I would feel a little more comfortable about them. But... Uh, However, it's past history now, and uh, I can't do too much about it. But he, uh, if Fraser's going to be in this game at all, this was that was the shot, and uh, maybe a similar pattern to what uh, what I did out of the gate as well, uh, getting a few strikes. But uh, it's up to Fraser now to come back, uh, similar to what John did last game, and uh, he's got to put some strikes on the board. And there's the first one. Gets him back into this 90 through the fourth, a strike going, and. Uh, Certainly, uh, you know, the winning 50 pins or less, and uh, those kind of things are manageable. And uh, he wants here to get another mark, uh, bring the margin of uh, the difference under 50 pins. And uh, spare here will do it. It's, uh, he doesn't have to get all back in one shot. And as we have seen over the course of this afternoon, 
Always seems to be a let up one way or the other, and someone will let the door open just a bit. Just a bit, and that's the game. It's, uh, it's a game of offense, and uh, you know, nice. we wanted that spare. That was uh, very fortunate. 120 through the fifth, spare up in the sixth, 50, uh, 56 pins. Bit of a lonely time this afternoon for John. His wife and kids are at Crystal Beach. Well, at the beach, and uh, heck, if John can bring home the money, Judy will be uh, happy regardless. And uh, boy, John keeps that 56 pin age and gets back that strike ball. And uh, boy, he's closing in on uh, closing in on win number three here without any trouble. Yes, sir. 176 through the fifth and a double. We're talking about strikes. It's 12, 14 out of 15. Member, as I mentioned earlier, from lucky strike lanes, but nothing lucky about John's play this afternoon. That's skill and talent. That's for sure. The lanes aren't breaking a lot. They're, they're not as dry as, uh, as lanes could be, and John's able to hold the line quite well. And uh, whereas Fraser's trying to work the ball a little bit and work it into the pocket, it's not, uh, it's not going as well. Trying to, when I say work the ball, he's trying to break it. You know, so he wants to break it into that left pocket. And it's uh, John playing a little better of a line shot. Is, uh, Over the course of 34 years, he has won 35 tournament events. That's not a bad average. Well, certainly a major winner on the tour. And uh, he's kept a diary of his, uh, of his career. And he can, uh, he can list them out for you. And uh, like I say, with the Hall of Fame induction coming up this November 5th, uh, it's just going to work out great. Uh, Fraser going in along with Bowlers, Helen McCallum, Ron Gifford, and uh, from St. Catharines as well, Marjorie Summers. So it'll be a great night for five-pin bowling again. Bowling elite. The bowling elite for sure. And uh, now sitting through the seventh at 170, uh, still with a 3.05 game there. Um, all possible, but very doubtful. One more here. We'll put the lid on it, and it's there. John knows it, too. Well, John's he, uh, been on the stepladder twice, never has made it to the televised stage, and uh, certainly made up for that here this afternoon. Well, 221 and a double. He's still looking at 400, and uh, certainly an amazing back-to-back uh, -back games. Uh, 221 and this double, 401 possible here, and uh, making it fairly simple. X marks the spot. little English there by John. We couldn't see it yeah. on our cameras, but... Well, with Fraser's maximum of 305, uh, John is uh, John's really not in any trouble here at all. He's going to win this tournament. He's going to win $2,000. Uh, Fraser's going to take home 1,000. And uh, for John, it'll be uh, win number three. And uh, uh, another fellow, too, with his, uh, he'll get a lot more chances to uh, win some more events. And uh, we congratulate John Willock from uh, Stony Creek. Picking him up, 296 through the ninth. 305 is the maximum Fraser's going to, so uh, Fraser knows it too. He knows that uh, the task is too large to uh, overcome, and uh, he'll have to settle for second place in this event as well. And uh, John came off great guns uh, in his victory over you in the semifinal match, Walter, and just uh, picked it up here in the championship. Never gave Fraser a chance to uh, really get into it. Not really a chance at all, and uh, all the exceptional games, uh, winning the three games, and. Uh, Certainly, uh, as he showed today with his with his bowling today, uh, shooting 1478 today, as we talked about 353 and a pair of 321 games around that. Uh, he pulled it together and carried it through, and uh, Fraser's going out here with a few strikes, and uh, he's going to look back at this game and uh, see a couple of spots where he could have won it. At 215, the double, still 305 there. John Woolick then needing a 10 count, which is really... Uh, Academic uh, should Fraser throw two more strikes. And that's not going to happen anyway. It's been so the story that, uh, this afternoon. It's been the story a little bit, but not enough. And uh, we see two winners with uh, Shirley Chickie and uh, John Willick here. And uh, as we uh, really bring the uh, provincial end of the uh, 25th year of the Master Bowlers uh, to a close uh, this 1988-89 season. On memories from Welland for John Willick, $2,000 in memories. Fraser finishing with 281. John able to just roll the ball. Look at the carry he had in those corners today. Uh, just tremendous how he pulled those, uh, carried those corners. And uh, certainly, as you see, the winners have the best shot. I think we saw that with Shirley. And uh, John, he just guides it in. And uh, 
Maybe he's going to move down here and stay for a little while. Shooting back to back, 375. This one here coming up, one more strike. No, as he misses, 35, 331, 375, 331, winning. While the crowd is in awe, Mr. Willett didn't end off with a strike, but it was enough anyway to win this match, 331 to 281, and the Rose Festival Bowling Championship here in Welland. We'll be back with a final look after you watch this. And at the end of it all, we have two champions, a male champion and, of course, a ladies' champion. Our male champion for 1989, John Willick, of course, from Stony Creek, and our women's champion from Font Hill, Shirley Checky. Our Rose Festival queen for 1989 here in Welland is Lori Coring, and Lori would present the checks to the deserving winner's place. Congratulations to you, John, and, of course, to you as well, Shirley. Shirley, you beat the youthful upstart in Brandahini from London. Tell me what it was like to come up through the ladder and have to beat the top qualifier. Tough. Well, it was uh, surprising that I did it, and I was very pleased and, uh, because Brenda's such a tough competitor, and, uh, and so is Claudina as well. So uh, I was very happy with the end result. You've been bowling for quite a few years. Does veteran experience count in this sport? No. <laughs> a lot of luck. <laughs> Between you and your husband, Joe, of course, a Hall of Famer, just a great bowling couple. Uh, this has to add just a little more icing to the cake. That's right. It sure does. Earlier in the match, in fact, in the 10th end, 10th uh, frame, rather, uh, Walter mentioned in his commentary the match was in the bag, uh, let's say a cement bag, and congratulations. Going to make work a little bit easier tomorrow. Yes, it sure will. Thank you. Best of luck. Shirley Chickie, our women's champion. Let's move over to John Shirley, if you can just move aside ever so slightly. John, what a great couple of games. Uh, Walter Heaney uh, finished him off with eight consecutive strikes, and you open up in the championship round with even more strikes. Grand total of 19. Did you realize your luck would be so good this afternoon? Well, I did really have a good shot today. The ball would roll over for me, and I had obviously great carry today. The lanes played great all weekend long, most of the competitors thought. Yes, uh, the ball was breaking quite a bit more than it has here in the past years, uh, which uh, gives us a lot higher scores. The strike phenomena. Did you realize everything was going to be so in groove? Well, again, I had a good shot. I missed a lot this weekend, but when I did get my pace going, uh, I knew it was going to be there. Great tune-up event. You, of course, will be going to St. John's with our Ontario team in the Masters National Championships. The way you're going now, I think you'd like to go as a competitor rather than as a coach. Well, it was a little disappointing to uh, miss out, but being a coach will give me the opportunity to go. Unfortunately, your wife and children were not here to see this great event. They'll get a chance to see it, obviously, on television. But uh, what you'd like to come here and bowl alone, uh, obviously, your thoughts were with them, and I'm sure uh, theirs with yours. Yes, uh, they'll be watching, and uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate the show. John Willick, the 1989 champion, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, if I could say, I'd like to thank Channel 11 for broadcasting the show, and also Brunswick, too. Uh, terrific. Thank, thank you. you. John Willick, of course, an expediter with DeFasco, and today uh, definitely a man of steel. Superman could not be beat, and uh, you can attest to that. Well, that's for sure. It was a pleasure for me to be on the, te on the television show, and then uh, to run into John, he threw the last eight in a row, and uh, certainly that's all he needed. And... Uh, if you hear John talk about it, he certainly understands the game a little bit, and uh, to understand what he means about rolling the ball and it turning over for him, uh, I think of all the players, uh, when we saw the end of it, he definitely had the right shot for today. Plenty of action on the ball and on the pins as well. Tell me about the effect of the new rubber bands. Well, the bands, uh, certainly there's been a problem in the province this year with scoring, and uh, Bob Janak, one of the proprietors in Cambridge, has put together a band, and uh, they're using it in various centers across the province now, and... Uh, it's done very well, and we look forward to having more of them on the market next year and better scores, because that's what makes better bowling. John will be coaching, uh, Willock will be coaching our provincial team in the Nationals, the Masters Nationals, uh, slated for St. John's in early July. And uh, tell me about this. Was this a good tune-up event uh, for the big event? Well, a tune-up for everybody. The uh, Greg Pedaretti, who we beat, he'll be out there playing. Uh, John's got a young team with him and uh, certainly a new team going to the Masters, and uh, he'll certainly have his hands full with the coaching job, and uh, Ian Cameron has sat in for me in that one game and certainly did an excellent job. He's going to be the singles representative for Ontario, and I know he's very keen to uh, bring home the uh, national title to this province. Uh, no man has won it since 1975. Well, the top two qualifiers in this event, unfortunately for them, go down to defeat as the folks moving up the ladder come on to win it, namely Shirley Chickie from Font Hill and from Stony Creek, John Willock. That is the 1989 Welland Rose Festival Bowling Classic sponsored by Brunswick. On behalf of Walter and the rest of the bowlers, Paul Hendricks saying so long from Welland. See you back here next year.